were the first Chalk Springs rainbow for me for about 35 years. Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now I do enjoy, yes, my fly fishing for trout. Doesn't matter what species it is, doesn't matter whether I'm using a sinking line, a floating line, fast retrieve, slow retrieve, big nymph, small nymph, big lures, whatever, it's still trout fishing. It's entertaining. But there's one method that really does float my boat, and that's called stalking. And one of the top places that I used to go stalking 35 years ago was Chalk Springs in Sussex. Now, I haven't been here for that length of time. That's the honest truth. It was so clear. It was unbelievable. And I thought, I'm going to go back. I'm just going to see how clear it still is. Because a lot of waters I find have gone a little bit smoky over the years. Whether it's the weed content, I don't know. Chalk Springs was the place. And fishery manager down here, John, is going to give us a little bit of an insight about it. Me, I'm getting geared up to go fishing. I hear it's really tap water clear. Well, we've got four lakes, um, east, north, south and west. Um, I suppose we've got about four, four and a half acres of water. Um, lakes are quite deep. I suppose your average depth is anywhere between 10 and 15 foot, I suppose. Um, they go down to about 25 feet in the, in the deepest of, of the parts. Um, so yeah, I mean, stocking wise, your average fish is probably two and a half to three and a half pounds. Good scattering of fish, sort of four, five, six, sevens, and then we do fish up to sort of low doubles at the moment. Now what sort of stock have you actually got in here, because you're self-sufficient with your stock ponds here. Yeah. What sort of stock are you holding here, numbers? At the moment probably, I mean on the farm at the moment, we've, we've probably got about 10,000 fish on the farm. I mean, it sounds a lot for a small fish farm. A lot, a lot of those are fingerlings, um, so they're not taking up as much room. And obviously we're going through a lot of fish as well. Being the summer, we're, we're pretty busy. So we're going through a lot of fish at the same time. So we do have a constant turnover of fish on the farm, yeah. What about stock? What have you, what's the species you've got holding here? Uh, we do rainbows, browns and blues here. Um, I suppose the majority of our fish are rainbows. Uh, we have good numbers of browns and, and a few blues mixed in there as well, just gives people a bit of a variety. So you're set basically in a valley here, isn't it, the actual That's right, yeah. It's all, it, we're, we're all situated on the, uh, the Norfolk Estate, the Duke of Norfolk Estate in Arundel. Um, and we're quite fortunate because we're in, a, we're in a bit of a mini sort of valley here. You know, we stay fairly sheltered from the winds unless you get a real strong one blow up. Um, and yeah, it's, it's nice actually because it's not too noisy, you know, you tend to forget about the main road once you've been here for a little while. Um, it's a nice spot, yeah. Uh, on fishing, what, what sort of times do you start and finish? Well, we open at 8 in the morning, uh, fishing starts at half past. And then at the moment we're open till half 8 um, of an evening, but that's going to obviously get, get earlier as the year goes on, um, as the days draw in. It's dusk near enough. Yeah. Is, it, is it sort of renowned as a year round uh, fishery Absolutely. come in the winter here? Absolutely, yeah. Because we have, uh, because all the water spring fed, it stays at a fairly constant temperature um, throughout the year. So in the winter, it's fairly warm, it stops the lakes freezing over, um, so you get good sport so the fish don't completely shut up. You know? um, and in the summer, it stays fairly cool, so it's good sport all year round, yeah. I mean, obviously, being the summer, you know. You have the old day where it's a bit harder. It's been very humid, very hot and bright recently, but you know, that's fishing. Um, I see you've got um, a sort of aeration system there then. I've seen the paddle ones on the surface, and I've seen the sort of fountain ones, but your one looks a little bit different. What are those? Well, we just have, um, we have air stones that run off a main airline. So the main airline feeds all the ponds uh, on the fish farm, and we have several air stones in each pond just to keep the, um, just keep aeration up to a good standard, up to a good level in the pond really, um, give the fish as much help as they can possibly get. Now when I fished here, and it was a very long time ago, it had to be at least 35 years ago, it was, it was people can make, anglers, this is talking about fishermen, can make a mistake here of not realising how deep those fish are swimming because it is so clear, would yeah, that be correct, that anglers have yeah. got to use 
if they want to get down to the fish, you've got to be aware they're swimming a lot deeper than they actually look. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I say, the lakes are deep and they're deceivingly deep. It's one of those optical illusion things with the clear water. But, you know, most of the guys that come down here that haven't been here before, the sort of depths that they're fishing at for those fish, you know, you want to be doubling that at least. Because a lot of the time, they're casting out and retrieving their flies almost instantly as soon as those flies have hit the water. And in effect, all you're doing then is pulling your fly away from the fish. Um, you know, you need to get down to the fish. You need to cast out, let your, let your fly sink. So you need a long enough leader, um, even, if, even if it's, you know, a rod length. A rod length's fine. If, as long as you've got nine, ten foot um, of leader to get down to the fish and get that, get that fly down to their level then. Um, because it's rare, you know, especially this time of year, it's rare that they'll come up in the water to take uh, a weighted fly, you know, it needs to get down, you need to get underneath them and draw it through them. And do you get hatches of fly here? We've got lots, yeah. I mean, Good they, mayfly, I imagine, do you? We do, yeah. I mean, they were a bit, um, they're a bit early, in fact, this year. Um, but yeah, we get good mayfly, we get lots of alders, um, blue damsels everywhere in the summer, um, which is why the damsel nymphs tend to, tend to score quite well, uh, especially in the morning when the nymphs are rising up through the water before hatching off. Um, but yeah, really good fly life, yeah. What sort of fly line would you use here or recommend to people? Well, for someone that's not come down before, um, a floating line's absolutely fine. If you find some guys prefer a, a sinking tip or an intermediate just to get the fly um, that little bit deeper, um, especially if it's bright. But to be honest with you, as long as you've got a long enough leader, a floating line's absolutely fine. Uh, now the benefit of this sort of fishery is, is what's called a put and take fishery. So you put the fish in, the guys can come and take them, obviously to a limit, uh, and obviously different price ranges you do for people. But do you do anything like a membership? Yeah, we do. Um, so obviously, like you say, any, anyone can come in and buy a day ticket. Um, we've got a number of different options. So we have a two, a three, a four, or a five fish limit on our day tickets. Um, but for the guys that are going to be here regularly, um, you know, that come sort of once a week, twice a week maybe, for a morning or for an evening, uh, we do a, a block ticket membership. So um, you join as a member for £150, um, that's a one annual payment, and then you buy blocks of 10 fish for £75 on top of that. So if you were going to join today, you'd give me 225 quid. Ouch, ouch! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if you use it regularly enough, then it's uh, it's financially beneficial. Yeah. Because what, it's, what it guarantees you is that when you've bought those 10 fish, you are going to catch those at some point. Whereas if you're coming regularly, sort of, you know, let's, let's say if you're coming every week and you're buying a three fish ticket for half a day, yeah, for half a day's fishing, um, if you have a bum day or you come on a really busy day and you struggle a couple of those times, then, you know, your wallet's going to know about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if you've got 10 fish in the bank um, as one of our members, then if you can come down for an hour here or there if you want, if you want to and just catch one fish and go, you yes, are going to catch yes. those fish at some point. Less, less uh, pressure, less pressure. Absolutely, on yeah. There's, not, there, there's very little pressure, yeah. So you can use up those fish as and when. Um, and if you like I say, if you use it regularly, um, then that's financially where where you're better off. Yeah. A bit of an advantage for the yeah, owners. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Facilities-wise, um, we've got a car park, plenty of room. Um, we've got a small shop here. Sort of we sell the basics that you might need to fish here or somewhere like here. Um, we don't, you know, don't stock loads of loads of tackle, but we've got rods, reels, nets, limes, uh, plenty of flies, leader, all your basic sort of bits and pieces. Um, and then we've got the lodge down on the lakes there, which has got self-serve tea and coffee. Um, so everyone's free to help yourselves with that. Um, obviously, somewhere to shelter if it starts chucking down the rain as well. Um, but yeah, we've got all basics covered really. Some fabulous fish in there, good information. I can't wait to get down there. Well, I'm not gonna wait, let's get cracking.
Okay, it's going to be noisy because I'm down by the edge of the road here. Floating line it is about, I don't know what this rod is about. It's a nine foot six, it takes a number seven line. I use it for trout, I wouldn't use it for bonefish or anything bigger like that or carp really. I've got, when all else fails, a little uh, dress in there, almost a bear hook with this really nice sort of, I don't know what that colour is, it's a pearlescent, but I think I may keep snipping it back so it sinks. It might be a little bit garish in the clear water. It will, you want something that attracts their attention but doesn't actually spook them too much. And down here by this tree overhanging area, over there I can see fish moving anyway. I'm going to give it a go and just see if we can't get a take out of one of these rainbows. Well guys, I just came down the, by the road here. It's like a motorbike going through this room. Yeah, down by the road here. Don't think anybody's been down this way yet. I'm just on the edge of the weed, but I've had several casts of fish that did not look at it at all. They barely want it moving. I haven't got this one yet, obviously. He is, I'll let me show you, burying himself in the weed as we speak. He is down somewhere in amongst that lot there. Not the most spectacular fight, but I've got to try and get him out of that weed before he gets himself out. Let's see if I can get him out for you. Come on. I'm going to go for net as net. I'm going to net the weed as well. What am I going to do? There we go. A fish and weed. Let's take a look at it. Well, the first chalk springs rainbow for me for about 35 years. Possibly, possibly longer. A nice rainbow. You can see there the fly that when all else fails just in the corner there. But I've had a lot of fish turn off it. Do you know what? I just, I wonder I might have to cut that dressing back a bit. And if I cut the dressing back, it's also going to allow the um, fly to sink out a little bit faster. It's so clear here. And the other thing I do is this. I use, for keeping my trout, best place is a cooler. Make no mistake, if you keep them trout in hot weather, put it in a cooler with those blue freezer blocks. But rather than carry the trout all the way round, sometimes they can, in the water, cook. So don't leave them there long. But this one, because I've only just got here, I'm going to use a stringer like this. It just opens out, okay? Goes through the jaw of the fish locks up like a little link i could put my what one two three four five fish on there and then i've got a spike at the end which i put in the ground so i could just lay this in the water while i just walk to the other lake and then pick it up on the way back Put that willow tree there. It wasn't there when I looked just now. Goodbye fly. I don't mind the odd fly. It's the tie in the leader I hate. <laughs> Me and the phones. <laughs> I got one, but my goodness me, it took some hooking up. He's over there. I think you're going to see him in there. Clear water there. Look, it's not a big fish, but it's going really well. Right into the weed.
Now once you've netted your trout, you want to dispatch it for that. I've got this. I made it when I was about 14, 15 year old metal work. That's my total engineering skills. That and tying a knot. You're going to hit the fish over the head hard, right between the eyes, once or twice. Those of a squeamish nature look away now. Job done. There you go. A nice rainbow. Hook even fell out. I think I killed the fly as well. No, look where he's taken it. Right down in there deep. So, a couple of great fish there. Pleased with that. Stalking works. But my goodness me, it's pretty tough. same nymph they want it so slow it's unbelievable they're not chasing they want it sort of not sinking but not static difficult to say really I suppose it's barely moving it upwards I think like a natural nymph will be coming up through the water but I've not actually seen the other fish in here I've not seen their mouths snapping where they're taking other nymphs but listen I don't want to complain do I there's the third rainbow on It'll be a tad bigger just over two I guess and a very fine scrapper. fish about two two and a quarter with that surface getting rippled by the wind really tough spot in the fish they're barely moving their mouths open and close to take the fly small um, like a it's not even a shellback shrimp it's a sparkle shrimp when I said nights man it's, it's tough fishing but there you go I've got three fish out already take me a couple of hours hot and still good looking fish but you know what I'm gonna go and have some lunch and I'm gonna go down that bottom and see if I can't catch one of those elusive chalk spring brown because they are in there but boy, are they tough. Make sure you get yourself a good long peak cap or hat that enables you to cut down on the sunlight above your head and therefore you can see through the water a little bit better. That shading makes all the difference when you're spotting the trout or looking for any fish indeed. And of course, the other most important item you're gonna need are these polarizing glasses that cut down the surface glare and enable you to basically almost see beneath the water. That way, when you are stalking an individual trout, you cast to the right fish. You get the right size fish hooked up, or at least, let's face it, that is the theory. Well, I changed over guys to sort of uh, black, small black nymph really, one of Sid's uh, weighty ones, like a black ant it is, with a black head on it. Straight away, first cast, for some reason, he seemed to like it. Let's have a look, it's like a black ant there. You see it against the back of the hand there. But it's got a black, instead of a gold head, it's got a black head there. So it does get down. 
So there we go. Good catch of fish today. Been tough. Plenty for the frying pan or the smoker. Thanks for watching a totally awesome fishing show. Until next time.